Hello, it's Thursday, June 9th, 2016, and as of this recording, I'm still depressed, but I'm not dead. Hey, welcome back and thanks for listening everybody. It's hard to believe that this is the 13th episode I'm putting out already. Wow. Um, you know, when I started this, I didn't really have an idea how it would go, um, how long it would go. Uh, you know, I started it kind of a personal therapy, personal account of what I'm going through. Kind of think of journal, but uh, I'm not a writer and I, you know, I'm not very good at keeping a journal. And, you know, I also, when I got this going, I wasn't sure that I'd find enough things to talk about. Um, you know, I, I wondered if, oh, geez, I'll do five episodes, ten episodes, and I'll run out of things to talk about. I don't know that I have yet. And uh, as long as you guys are going to keep listening, I'm going to keep talking. So, uh, you know, we're sitting here with uh, just over 400 downloads uh, for the show in total. So, you know, that works out to 30-some an episode which is, you know, amazing to me. Uh, so thank you each and every one of you who have downloaded and listened. Those of you who have just downloaded and not listening, you won't hear this. Uh, I'm not thanking you. Listen, and then I'll thank you. You know, I've gotten some really good emails the past week and or two, um, and I appreciate everybody who's taking that extra minute after listening to a show uh, and dropping me a line. Sometimes um, in response to what you know, I talked about sometimes it's completely different. You know, I really appreciate that. So thank you all so very much. Uh, and for those of you wondering how you can get in on this messaging back and forth with me, well, let me tell you, you can find me all sorts of ways. Uh, first of all, there's email, um, jamolke at gmail.com. On Twitter, the handle jamolke. On Facebook, facebook.com slash jamolke. And the slowly, ever slowly growing blog, uh, www.jamolki.info. Uh, that's J A M O A L K I. So drop me a hello. Let's start a conversation. And uh, that, that takes care of the housekeeping. So let's get on with the show. Okay, so I've got a few topics this episode that I like to get to. Um, but first, I, I kind of I call for help here. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to drop kind of a little tidbit, a little nugget of information each episode. And I, I acknowledge that I'm already awkward enough when I'm talking. Um, so, I, you know, I want to find a way to kind of make it fun, um, you know, kind of a, a piece of information maybe you hadn't thought of or maybe you have thought of and forgotten about or, or who knows what. Uh, you know, last week I did that kind of pseudo sponsor bit with the uh, study on the chemical there. Uh, I've already forgotten what it is, <laughs> but you know, it's the metabolite of ketamine. And I, I don't really like the way that went when I was listening to it when I was editing the show. I actually thought about taking it out, but you know, no, I, I had finally I decided, no, I want to I want to get started on this somehow. So I need some ideas. How um, give me an idea on how I could insert something like this into the show. Maybe maybe it's just a matter of me being more comfortable with the fake sponsor bit. I don't know. I guess you know, I'm open to ideas. So, guys, uh, let me know. Those of you who haven't emailed, this could be your first time to email me and give me your idea. But so this <laughs> as an awkward segue, I guess, into uh, what I've got this week for you. And well, you know what I've got is a phone number for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. You know, we all, those of us with depression, uh, even without depression, I suppose, sometimes we get to that situation where we are really unsure how safe we are uh, left to ourselves. And sometimes we think we need to reach out for help. A good deal of the time we don't feel like reaching out to friends and family is something that we should do. We are, you know, we often feel like a burden already and we don't want to bother them you know uh you know geez nora was going to uh knitting class this you know tonight and gosh i don't want to keep her from doing that so i'm not going to bring this up well you know sitting here right now i can tell you that that's probably not the best way to go about it but given when you know if you're in a situation if you're in that dark of a place that sounds like perfectly logical rationalization so 
you know, maybe you're in a situation where you, where you know you need help, but you're not sure where to get it. So that's why this uh, suicide suicide prevention hotline exists. It's uh, 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-APE-TALK. And no, the line is not staffed by tailless primates. It's actually manned by skilled, uh, trained counselors 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, if you do call, you know, you're calling a crisis center in the Lifeline network closest to your location. So after you call, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm reading this right from their website. After you call, you will hear a message saying you have reached the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. You will hear hold music while your call is being routed. You will be helped by a skilled, trained crisis worker who will listen to your problems and will tell you about mental health services in your area. Your phone call is confidential and free. So really, there's no reason not to call. If you're in that situation and you're in a moment of crisis, uh, hopefully you acknowledge it and you see it as a moment of crisis. Do something for yourself and give them a call. They would, you know, that's folks are sitting around waiting to hear and help out. I'm sure they would prefer no one needed to call, but those of us who we're out here and sometimes we need to call. Uh, so again, that's 1-800-APE-TALK, or you can go to their website at www.suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And I will put that in the show notes, of course. Okay, so now let's get on to the first item on the agenda. And what I really want to do is talk up just a fantastic website that I've been visiting for several weeks. Uh, it's www.sicknotweek.com. That's S-I-C-K-N-O-T-W-E-A-K. Looks like sick, no tweak, but it's sicknotweek.com. Uh, this is a website. It was started uh, by a Canadian man, Michael Landsberg, who, as I understand it vaguely, is uh, some, some form of a uh, personality, media personality in Canada. And he started up this project Kind of it's dedicated to giving those with mental illnesses a voice to share their story, a chance to help others who are on the same journey as them, and overall to help fight the stigma of mental illnesses. So things you can look to find there, uh, there's a daily video blog from Michael himself. They are, I don't know, three to eight minute videos. They're YouTube videos, but they're uh, embedded on the site. So, it, you know, it's a, kind of a short, condensed version of this podcast, <laughs> um, though produced much better and with somebody with a more dynamic voice and personality. But, uh, you know, it, I've only watched a couple because videos are not my thing, um, but I am struck when watching the videos that it is remarkable to see uh, the person behind the voice and see them in their setting. And it's it's not what you might think. It's not some kind of drab uh, Michael sitting in his, his office with rows of books behind him. You know, there was one he was out uh, getting ready to barbecue and shot a little video, you know, imploring people to to help out to how they can um, get the voices heard out there to help fight stigma. Uh, so yeah, there is that on the website. There's also, uh, it's a place where you can read stories from others just like us. Uh, there's short, short stories, under 800 words for the submissions uh, from other people about their journey, their struggles, their triumphs, uh, so many more things. Um, you know, uh, misdiagnosis, there was a story there from a woman. You know, all, all kinds of things. And it, nearly each day, there's a new story up. So, you know, between the, the, the video blog and the stories alone, I would say it's, it's worthwhile for you to sit, you know, in your bookmarks for sites you go to every day. You know, and maybe not every day you find something that's useful, but, you know, reading through the stories, sometimes you see a string of words that are put together in a way you hadn't thought of it. And it, it gives you some insight into what you're going through and, uh, you know, not always solutions on how to fix things, but sometimes just hearing a different thought about something that you may be feeling as well is very insightful and can be helpful. You know, you can even submit your own story to them. There's a, there's a part on the website where you can do that. Um, and the, you know, terms and conditions and all that, but check it out. If, you know, if you feel like you've got a short story you want to get out there that might help other people go ahead and do it and try, see if they'll get it on the website. Uh, you know, and speaking for someone who has started, you know, putting his own stories out in podcast form, it it is an important good feeling, at least for me, that I've put to words and put somewhere permanent 
those words that you know others can can hear and you know I, I listen to my stories again when I edit the show and sometimes that's just enough for me that oh wow okay yeah I said that and sometimes listening back to my own voice makes me see something in a different light and or even just uh, acknowledge something you know I've mentioned before how I have difficulties acknowledging my own situation um so yeah give that a try um, the part where I hang out the most on the website is they have a, a some chat software on the website. Uh, so you can go in and you can go into a, an anonymous chat room with others, for others with mental illness and uh, importantly, their caregivers. So, you know, that's something that Nora has mentioned and she's trying to get something up and going on the blog and would like to have her own companion podcast here about for other for those who are involved with people with mental illness and how do we help them how do we care for them uh and maybe not specifically how to care because this is strictly these are not uh mental health professionals in these chat rooms they are you know there are moderators in each room as of right now uh would you go in between 4 p.m and midnight eastern time there's uh there's space enough for three rooms i believe uh it, it may be more i don't know it just always seems like there's three uh, and there are volunteer moderators in the room with you. Um, they are not therapists. They are not psychiatrists, psychologists. Uh, they're, you know, they, they may be social workers, but it, that's not their job in there. They are in the room to kind of keep the conversations going and police the talk going on for abuse within the room. You know, so I said, you know, how do we care for folks with mental illness? And, and you know, the, you can go in and you can get some ideas. You can get some um, personal stories, uh, you know, and, and anything like that advice is kind of with a grain of salt, which I think should be understood by, by most, uh, most adults in the world, but it's great. I mean, you go in, you set up an anonymous name, um, you do kind of set a score for how you're feeling a one to 10 score and that accompanies your name in the chat room. So you figure, you think you go into the chat room and you've got, you know, Bob McBoberts and a score of four and, so you hop in and the moderator say, hey, Bob, hey, I see you're a four, you know, what's on your mind? And at that point, you're free to kind of share a little bit if you want. If you don't want to share, that's fine. You can say, hey, you know what? I'm just here to kind of watch and, and see what's going on. And that's perfectly acceptable. And there's lots of people who do that all the time. You know, but you can, you can say, oh, geez, uh, you know, I'm just having a really bad day and this and this and this happens. And, you know, there's people and they listen and, and they commiserate with you and they you know, share, oh gosh, yeah, you know, that happened to me once too. And, you know, this and that and this and that. And sometimes, you, you know, you just go in and you share what's on your mind and, and that feels a little bit better. I've seen, you know, all kinds of folks in there, folks who are, you know, in crisis to folks who are, you know, have had a great day and they want to share that. And, you know, there's just all, all kinds of stories and things to go on in there. Um, you should check it out. There's, there's always regulars and newcomers and really folks from all over the world each day. I mean, I've specifically, I know, you know, England, Canada, America, um, and heck America is so geographically big. It's, it's impressive when you, you know, hear from somebody from, you know, New Mexico or Florida or here or there. So go check it out. Tell them Jamolki sent you. They'll probably be a little bit confused by you saying that, but Hey, I'd kind of like to get my name a little bit out there. I'm getting to a point where I'd like to maybe grow my listenership and we'll see. Uh, so go, don't tell him Jamulki sent me, sent you, who sent me, you know, go check it out. It may be for you. It may not be, but you know, they're doing fantastic work over there at sick, not week. And, you know, I wanted to give them a little shout out, but more importantly, I wanted to kind of introduce you all to another tool you can put in your, your work bag of, you know, things to kind of help you along your way. So, you know, I don't know Michael Landsberg. I don't know any of his team, but as far as I can tell, they're doing really great things. Uh, it's professional looking. It's, uh, it's everything it promises to be, and it doesn't promise to fix you or cure you. It just promises to be with you along the ride. And, you know, we all need some folks like that in our lives. So, yeah. So, you know, let's move on to the next topic. Um, and I, I've mentioned before about the subreddit that I go to about depression, and I realized I haven't linked to it, so I will do that. And it's I'm, I'm not really a big Reddit guy. I don't 
particularly like the format of, of how the information is disseminated and the different voices and things like that. Um, but I do like going to this particular subreddit and I do go every day kind of looking for insight from others, um, or maybe a chance to offer up some advice to, advice to someone else. Um, there's just a lot of really usually good peer to peer question and answering going on. You know, it's valuable to me. So, but you know, I was looking at it uh, this morning and I can't remember the exact um, post that made me think of it, but in general, you know, I see a lot of people they're expressing grief over say death or you know there's younger folks who you know they're failing a class or school's almost out and they don't have a future or you know lost relationship my boyfriend broke up with me and I lost my job you know things like that and I find myself wanting to help to offer up you know some bit of some little nugget of goodness to throw their way you know I've I'm 43. I've had a pretty full life. I've had lots of experiences. Like, geez, you know, I ought to be able to, you know, shed a little light onto what's going on with them, but I don't know how. And that's what struck me today. Situations like that, I can't relate to. You know, intellectually, I guess, logically, I can, but without the emotional component for myself, it's very, very difficult for me to to offer up anything. And this goes back to, uh, you know, a couple of different things. I think I mentioned it before when I was in the partial program, we talked, we did, you know, a, a class on grieving and um, it's foreign to me. I don't understand grieving. I don't understand that process. I don't understand the feeling of needing to. I just don't understand it at all. And I don't but think I've always been like this. I you know, I can remember being a kid and grandpa died and I was upset about, about that. So yeah, it's not, I don't by any stretch think that I'm a, uh, geez, what is it? A psychopath. Is that right? Antisocial. I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, whatever that is, you know, <laughs> folks who do not feel emotion whatsoever. And I think I'm in a situation right now where maybe I feel it, but I don't understand it. I don't, know how to put a uh, classification on that. So anyway, so I got to thinking, uh, you know, eating my bagels, yummy bagels, reading through the subreddits and whatnot that, you know, I, I'm trying to relate, put someone else's story into my life or try to find something analogous in my life to that. And I realized that I, I, I think I'm so, you know, emotionally stunted or cut off or whatever it is that I don't know if an external external event could make me feel worse uh, or, or better for that reason, for that matter. You know, I, I, I tried thinking, you know, what if my car got stolen? What if I got into a big accident? What if I had an, you know, a horrific injury um, to my body? Uh, what if, you know, someone in my life died? And, and I know that you know, it's, it's hard and no one wants to project what those things would feel like. But I, I, I can't say that I'd have an emotional response to that. I, and I wouldn't say that's that I don't care. I just don't, I just don't know, you know, if, you know, and, 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 you know, I've, uh, Nora has given me such a good life here and she's taking care of me and helping me find a way to get back to where I was before. And, and that's, you know, I'm dedicated to doing that. I just, I'm not sure. I, I, I still don't know what that path is, but I'm looking for it every day. I'm looking for it, but you know, let's say something were to happen and, and Nora decided, Hey, let's listen, bub. It's, you know, you're not holding up your end of the deal. And, you know, we made these agreements and these compromises and it's you're just not doing it I, I I don't want you around anymore and and sweetheart I know that you wouldn't say that if she did and I found myself you know looking needing somewhere to go something some you know safety a place to be a place to to, to carry on my life I don't know that that would change me emotionally I don't know that it would make me feel more sad. I don't know if it would make me feel more depressed. I don't know that it would affect me emotionally. You know, listening to myself say this is is strange, and I, I can't imagine what it sounds like to other people for me to say that. I have a general understanding that that that's not. <laughs> this is not a a 
a normal, reasonable way to feel. And, you know, maybe it's not reasonable to even to even ponder it, to think about it. But, you know, I, I don't know that things like that would change how I feel, what's going on. And it's not that I want bad things to happen. You know, in fact, I, you know, I want want all the good things to happen for everybody in my life. I, I want good to happen. I'm not, you know, I'm not a nihilist. I think it is where, you know, everything, everything sucks and it's going to suck. And why not just have more bad things happen? You know, that's not me, you know, and conversely on the other side, I don't know that good things, if good things were to come along, extra good things, I don't know if that would affect me much either. You know, I, I just don't know. I mean, what, what could it be, you know, win the lottery or I don't know, find the perfect job or whatever, you know, um, Hey, Nora and I are having a baby, you know, something like that. I don't know. I don't know that that would raise my mood either. I don't know if I think intellectually I would, I would acknowledge it and I would say, Hey, that's good. But I don't know that it would raise my mood if it would affect me that way. And in fact, I think all the kind of positives that I acknowledge, and not surprising to some folks, I suppose, who listen, um, you know, all my positives, you know, come through other people that I have in my life. You know, I acknowledge good things that happen to my friends and my family. Um, but I'll be honest, I don't fully understand how to appreciate it. And I don't share that joy that they have. I, I acknowledge it. I know that they're happy and I want them to be happy, but I don't, you know, I don't have, I don't know if that would be like a sympathetic happiness reaction. I don't, I don't know what that would be. So all this said, you know, this kind of takes me down farther down the road of questions. You know, I, I have kind of ideas in my head of what should be good things, what should be bad things. Um, but I don't know where these ideas have come from. I can't, I don't know where that my value system came from. And because I don't know that, uh, you know, you know, be, geez, I don't know, I'm getting kind of, you know, because I can't, I can't feel good and bad things. I don't know how I know what I think is a good thing is a good thing. I don't know how what I think is a bad thing is a bad thing. You know, how can I kind of parse out for me what is fair and just if, you know, I don't really feel slighted at any time by someone else. You know, if I'm only kind of basing my interpretations of the world on this kind of unknown mental scale of justice, she's, you know, I don't think I'm coming across quite right. I'm, I'm confusing myself maybe a little bit. I, you know, I, I get, you know, if someone, you know, if someone calls me a goddamned mf -er or something, you know, I know that's bad. And, you know, and so, hey, I, I should be offended by that. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know that I would feel offended. I don't know that I would feel bad. I can guarantee you I'd blush, but I don't know why. You know, so, you know, these are kind of, I don't know, maybe they're kind of existential. I don't know, but it's valuable to me because I, I don't, something happens, I don't feel good or bad about it. And so first off, I don't know how... I don't know exactly how to react just because, you know, I think that's good, but is it good? And, you know, the, the world is full of kind of subtleties and gray areas. It's not all over here, good, over here, bad. It's a lot more than that. And I, I, ooh, I, I, I don't feel those subtleties. I don't feel those situations. So it's difficult for me to react and be part of that situation. Jeez, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, God, I'm just confusing myself more. I said that already. Uh, I mean, the further along I go here, um, maybe this is something I have to revisit at another time. Maybe, you know, some of you could reach back out to me on this. Um, give me some help on this one or I don't know. I know this is, I know this is big, but I don't know. Uh, you know, when I was at, uh, DBSA last week, the facilitator there, woman is, you know, is really good at what she does and really good at making us all feel welcome. Um, I kind of brought this up a little bit then too. And she told me that, you know, not told me, but, you know, shared with everybody that, you know, she was in a situation like that before where she didn't really, wasn't sure what her feelings were, what they were telling her. And she said, you need somewhere to start and you start with four basic feelings, um, glad, mad, sad, and scared, and try to acknowledge those throughout your day. Um, and if you can start to pick up on those and you can master those four, 
then that gives you a good base at which to kind of go out from there. And I've thought about that a lot since she mentioned that, and I haven't figured out yet how to apply that. Sounds, you know, maybe, you know, when I was, when I was younger and maybe before I, you know, acknowledged what was going on with me and my, my depression, I would read about, you know, people saying, you know, geez, I just don't care. It's all a waste and whatever, whatever. And so many people seemed ungenuine, disingenuous, un, uh, not genuine with how they were expressing what they were feeling. And I just thought, oh, that's kind of melodramatic, you know, whatever. And listening to myself right now, I kind of, I kind of wonder if some of you aren't thinking that about me. I mean, it, it sounds almost absurd as I say it to say, I don't, I don't recognize and I can't describe feelings that I'm having. And what I was about to say is I, you know, I can't remember the last time I felt scared. You know, like when I was a kid, that'd be great. You know, you wanted to be tough and brave and not scared and, you know, all those Indiana Jones kind of things or whatever. But now I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't feel that, you know, mad. I, I guess I get, I get angry and frustrated sometimes. And that's usually an indicator of how, you know, how I am, where I'm at mentally. And usually the more frustrated I am, the, the, maybe the, the more time I need to take and, kind of focusing on myself and getting back to a, a good place. So I guess I could start there. I guess I start with the, the frustration and acknowledging, see, that's, but is frustration mad is, I mean, you know, maybe I'm overanalyzing it. So mad. So someone's driving slow on the road. I get mad on some days. What do I do with that? I don't know. Um, glad i uh, i don't know i mean um i i guess when you know halloween comes around and frankenberry cereal is available again i guess i'm glad about that but i don't know um so yeah help me out folks uh what, what do you think about this maybe what do you think about the whole mad glad sad scared thing i don't know uh <laughs> your turn to help me uh let me know what you think guys and another thing uh Another kind of couple of topics here. So yeah, I guess we'll close that one down for now. Can't seem to get to anywhere with it. So we'll move on to something a little more lighthearted. Um, tattoos. Nora, if you're listening, and I'm sure you are, uh, I'm thinking about getting another tattoo. To my friends, you guys out there, um, I've got an idea for a tattoo kind of showing my stance against stigma. And, you know, it. I guess... I guess I'd have to say, unless someone saw this tattoo and asked me about it, other than that, it would just be kind of an internal stance, but I, I kind of got this idea in my head and I'm thinking about it and I might, uh, I might do it. So I guess I need, a, you know, I'm thinking like inside my, my right forearm, I've seen folks with tattoos there. You know, this isn't going to be big and elaborate. And, you know, I'll tell you guys what it'll be as soon as I verify. I get a little bit of information on it. I'm trying. I, I reached out to a friend on Facebook and they gave me some information. And now I just want to uh, get, you know, get double check it. Right. I mean, obviously, if you're going to tattoo something, you should probably triple check it. So, yeah. So maybe a new tattoo. That's exciting. And, uh, oh, you know what? That makes me think, um, how, have you guys ever heard of this or seen this kind of semicolon tattoo? I first saw it a couple of years back and I didn't really kind of fully get it. Uh, and it was kind of a popular thing. I don't know if folks are still doing it. I would see a lot of times like if people, you know, on the inside of their thumb or bigger ones on the inside of their, their forearm, like I'm thinking maybe on their wrist something like that, but it's, it's a, it's a semicolon, right? You know, it's, you know, there's period, comma, semicolon, full colon, right? And I guess the idea of this is, you know, a semicolon is used when the author could have ended a sentence, but didn't, and they added on and they kept the sentence going. And so the idea here is, you know, you, I could have died by suicide, but I didn't, and I kept going. You know, it, yeah, it's, it's poetic. It's kind of neat. Um, I don't know. Semicolon is, I don't think that's for me, but, you know, check it out. You guys hop onto the, the Google machine and, and look into it a little bit. It, you know, not, not suggesting any of you go and get a tattoo, but, 
you know, it's interesting. Uh, check it out. You may find a few stories along in there that's something that might resonate with you and help you out. Yeah. So semicolon tattoo. Sure. Go for it. Uh, and finally, I was asked by my friend Johnny. He, he uh, emailed me back, emailed me a couple weeks ago. Uh, and he mentioned, you know, something he would like to hear about is the, the picture I use for the, the podcast here. So you get the little, you know, little icon and whatnot. And it's a picture of a, it's, it's a oil painting of an old man kind of with his, his face in his hands, almost looks like he's crying into his hands. And, you know, I wish I had a better story for it, but really I just, I saw that picture. I actually did a Google search for, you know, depressed, I think depressed, depression, something like that. And I kept scrolling through looking and I came across this one and it, I liked it. It's, you know, I, I ripped off. It's a, it's a Vincent Van Gogh painting from back in 1890. It's uh, called at eternity's gate. And I don't think he meant it to be used for depression. A uh, little bit I've looked into it is he just really liked the, the visualization of it. Uh, he kind of linked it into giving yourself over to a higher power in, you know, God in this case, which is not at all my bent on it at all. I just thought it was, you know, it was a striking picture of, to me, what looked like someone who was crying and upset or possibly, and I knew it was Van Gogh and I thought, Hey, let's class up the show a little bit and, you know, put a little, put a little culture into it. So, you know, Johnny, that's the story. It's at Eternity's Gate by Vincent Van Gogh. Check it out if you want. And, uh, and we've officially gotten to the point where I am rambling on and on and on. So unfortunately it is time for me to call it a show and, uh, get to editing so I can have this out to you good folks to listen to. Um, as always, thank you so very much for listening. Oh, you know what? I've been neglecting. Hey, those of you who listen to me through iTunes or wherever you may listen, if there is a rating system and iTunes, I know there is one, please go ahead. Give me five stars. I'm not asking you to give me five stars because you think I'm awesome. I don't take it as any kind of personal validation for my show, but if you like the show, um, and you think others might benefit from it. If you rate a show high five stars, then it shows up more frequently in searches. So that's a good way to help me get the word out and maybe to help others find this little show who, and they may or may not find something of value in it. Um, so yeah, five stars, not for me, but for others. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening. Everybody take care, be well, and I'll talk to you really soon. You know, it is, speaking as someone who has started telling his stories here, uh, it is kind of, um, it's, uh, you know, it feels good, I guess. <laughs> you know, those Canadians, they're fantastic. And that was stupid. <laughs>